An Aspen Times investigation shows the Forest Service might be protecting the ski industry from public scrutiny. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. First, it was cold this morning. But just how cold? Temperatures hit negative 8 at the Crystal Studios in Dillon and negative 20 in Summit Cove. One listener reported negative 32 near Soda Creek in the Cove, and the lowest low goes to Antero Reservoir in Park County, where the National Weather Service recorded negative 44 degrees. Summit could be 40 degrees warmer by tomorrow, with temps in the low 40s. Summit County Coroner has identified the man who died yesterday at Keystone as Martin Chater of Golden. The 66-year-old died of cardiac arrest while skiing on a frontside run. He had a history of cardiac issues. This is the first inbounds death of the season in Colorado and second skier death. A backcountry skier was killed by an avalanche on Cameron Pass earlier this month. Seven teenagers are accused of sparking a wildfire that scorched 20 acres near Glenwood Springs this summer, including the son of the White River National Forest Supervisor. The Post Independent reports that fire was caused by fireworks, allegedly shot off by six miners and one 18-year-old, Samuel Fitzwilliams. He is the son of Forest Supervisor Scott Fitzwilliams. The supervisor declined to comment. Public oversight is the latest casualty of ski resort pass wars between Vail Resorts and Altera Mountain Company. An investigative report from the Aspen Times shows the U.S. Forest Service has quietly changed its policy for reporting ski area permit fees, the millions of dollars resorts pay annually to operate on public lands. Before 2017, when Altera debuted, the Forest Service would release individual fees, like $6.39 million paid by Vail Resorts in 2016. Since then, the federal government has only released aggregate fees collected from 122 resorts nationwide. Vail and even federal officials say this is to protect confidential financial information and free market advantage. The Aspen Times concludes, quote, it appears the federal government is giving the ski industry leeway that it doesn't give to other industries. The Sackler family, owner of Purdue Pharma, at the center of the national opioid crisis, is accused of transferring $1.36 billion in company profits overseas. The Washington Post reports the Sackler family filed for company bankruptcy in September to protect against 2,600 lawsuits. That same month, the family sold its share of Peak Resorts, a collection of 17 ski areas, to Vail Resorts for about $60 million. Total value of Peak Resorts was $264 million. Avalanche danger remains considerable today at all elevations in the Summit Eagle County zone. Your problem is persistent slab on northwest through south aspects at all elevations. Today in roadwork news, CDOT is blasting boulders near Idaho Springs tomorrow, closing both sides of I-70 from 9 a.m. to noon. All westbound traffic is closed at Floyd Hill, and eastbound traffic is closed at Silverthorne, beginning at 8.15 a.m. U.S. Highway 6 at A Basin also shuts down at 8.15. In sports, the Avalanche lost to the Blues last night 5-2. All Colorado teams are off today, back tomorrow for the Avs and Nuggets. And in local sports, brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Weiss Agency. Race 4 of the A-Basin Rise and Shine Rando Series went down earlier today, still waiting on results. The Up and Adam Race Series at Frisco Nordic Center gets started tomorrow, Wednesday, at 7 a.m. with a skate race. Register at friscoNordic.com. And all Summit High Preps teams are off today, back tomorrow for hockey and basketball. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.